What's up YouTube? So today I want to start a brand new series for this channel. Now this could be considered like a mini podcast in a way, but it's really more of like an opinion review type of show where I take different topics in professional wrestling that I find really interesting or feel like it can really be elaborated on and break it down and mainly just talk to you guys about it. So this is a brand new series that I like to call Canvas Combo. There's a wrestling ring that has a canvas, not like the canvas that you do finger paints on, not that. Before this first installment, I actually want to talk about one of the biggest brands in professional wrestling of all time, the most successful and also the biggest failure in professional wrestling, the NWA. Now, May 1st, one year ago, Billy Corgan actually purchased the rights to trademarks and the world title of the National Wrestling Alliance. And within this year so far, we've seen the launching of the NWA Wrestling YouTube channel. That was launched on October 7th, 2017 with a new series called 10 Pounds of Gold, essentially telling you the history of the NWA and the current champion at the time, Tim Storm. Now, the history of the National Wrestling Alliance is so big and broad, as well as its fall from the top wrestling territorial system in the world to essentially nothing is so convoluted that it really takes some time to actually really understand it, which I'm about to tell you right now. Now, the art and sport of professional wrestling has been around for a long time, all around the United States and the entire world, featuring promotions that have separate world champions. And because there are so many promotions around the world, there's so many different world champions per promotion. Much like you see today, there's a world champion in Ring of Honor, there's a world champion in PWG, there's a world champion in Impact, there's a world champion in WWE, there's world champions everywhere. Now, the goal of the NWA was basically to take all these world champions all around the world and comprise it into one actual world champion. One championship held by one person at a time that traveled the entire world, the entire country, defending the actual world's heavyweight championship. Now the idea of the NWA actually originates from a Midwest promoter in 1948 whose name is Paul George but actually goes by the name Pinky George. But with that he didn't want to be the only person else making every single decision so him and five other promoters became the NWA board of directors. Now with this the board of directors decided that Orville Brown would be the first ever NWA world's heavyweight champion. Your grandfather first won it. The Midwest Wrestling Association. He won that title a number of times. They were never unified until 1948, the National Wrestling Alliance. Now, essentially, the goal of Brown's title reign was mainly to go around the country collecting different world championships and unification matches to make a legitimate statement that the NWA at the time was the overall head being of professional wrestling. And with that meaning that the world champion of this brand is the actual world champion of wrestling. So Brown would travel all around the world defeating different world champions, including AWA world champion Franklin Sexton. Now, at this time, the AWA World Championship, besides the NWA World title, was the top championship. Now, in 1949, Brown was actually scheduled to face Luthez, who was actually just a big overall world known NWA world champion as of today. Now that match unfortunately wasn't able to happen because Brown actually had gotten in a very serious car accident where his injuries were so serious he couldn't defend the world title leading to Luthez eventually just winning the championship. Now I really could go into a lot more detail about this kind of stuff but I'm really trying to condense the whole history because there is a lot, I mean like a lot of history with this NWA. Now somewhere in the mid 50s there's a lot of antitrust issues within the NWA even leading down to one more public wrestling court cases with the US versus the NWA in 1956. Now around this time the territory system of the NWA was essentially pretty much at its peak and there's a lot of promoters all around the world that basically just wanted to see Luthez finally lose this NWA World's Heavyweight Championship. By the way, if you didn't know, he held the title for 2,300 days. It's understandable. That's a long time. But there were so many other men that these promoters wanted to put the world title on, but the board of directors really didn't want to see Luthez lose the title to men like Vern Gagne. To give a better example of all the politics that were going around in NWA, you know the episode of SpongeBob when he gets the toy mailed to him, but Patrick for some reason helped him get the toy? And then they start arguing about how much time this guy can have with the toy and the other guy can have the toy, and then they start fighting over who can have the toy. That's basically the story of the NWA. We all want that toy for a little bit of time, but like the other guy, he keeps holding it. It's like, dude, it's my time for the toy. Now I'm assuming most of you guys already know how the territory system works or you like you have a good idea of how it works. So NWA territory system was basically like an umbrella organization. You have the NWA at top and it kind of just reigns over or protects the entire area. Seeing different parts of the country actually have like their own like state of wrestling in a way. But to keep moving on, in 1963, Buddy Rogers actually was defeated by Luthez for the championship because at this time, finally Luthez decided I'm gonna drop the belt. And when Buddy Rogers actually lost Luthez in 1963 in New York, now the promoter at the time, Vince McMahon Sr., he was having none of it. He was tired of Luthez basically being champion and he was like, dude, I quit. I'm sick and tired of your bull crap. Vince Sr. took his promotion and departed from the NWA altogether, creating the WWWF for himself and himself only. And that itself pretty much started the downfall of the territory system and the NWA altogether. Now, yes, having promoters leave the NWA is a really big, you know, no-no for them, obviously. Now, with the rise of cable television, which just sounds hilarious to say in 2018, and tape trading, which also sounds hilarious now because I can go on my phone 
and play every song in the world. Like Post Malone just dropped the album yesterday. I could play it. I don't need to buy a CD. Now fans all over the world started to see different territory storylines with this MWA World's title and they can start to see the inconsistencies with this storyline and the whole booking of the championship. Also when you see the world champion on television every week when he showed up in your area it didn't feel as special and he wasn't that big of a draw anymore. Basically what I'm saying is Brock Lesnar is the NWA World Champion. The NWA's downfall was only getting faster and faster by the minute. Because in 1984, Vincent Kennedy McMahon Jr., the one we all know today and somewhat hate at times, but also love him, and also are confused. Why is he so freaking buff? He actually bought Georgia Championship Wrestling, which is one more big and you know, prestigious promotions in the entire country. During his mid-1980s timestamp, New Japan Pro Wrestling, All Japan Pro Wrestling, and EMPL down in Mexico also decided to lead the NWA, which really took away from the international fans. And they got hit with another really big blow in 1993 when Jim Crockett Promotions actually left the NWA, aka WCW, which at that point they pretty much lost all of their big players in this whole territory system. And they didn't just lose them, they now have to compete against them. I didn't even mention ECW when Shane Douglas actually won the title and then threw it on the ground and said this company died seven years ago. And they can all kiss my ass. I am not the man who accepts a torch to be handed down to me from an organization that died R.I.P seven years ago. Kind of just nailed the coffin on that one, buddy. Now, around this time, NWA was pretty much any other wrestling promotion in the world. Even merging with upstart company like TNA in the early 2000s really didn't help them because they got a little petty with their stuff. Basically trying to control all the bookings and whatnot. And TNA was like, back the F up before TNA became their own sole entity as well. Now for the longest, any wrestling promotion can pretty much become part of the NWA. So you and all your backyard guys, if you guys start a promotion and actually get it running for like a solid year without like, you know, like failing, could have submitted your application and you could have been NWA trampoline wrestling. Now this will all change in 2017 with Billy Corgan from the Smashing Pumpkins and former TNA president, president, was, did he, was he there long enough to really be considered president? Where Billy Corgan actually bought the rights to the NWA. Now a lot of people are criticizing Billy Corgan when he first bought this promotion, basically saying he really had no experience in wrestling. He only was in TNA for a couple of months. While that is somewhat true, it also somewhat isn't. One, Billy Corgan is a lifelong fan of wrestling, and we have a fan of wrestling that has a lot of money that's willing to put forth a lot of money into wrestling, you might get yourself a good product. But back in 2013, I don't even know the company's still around right now. Billy Corgan actually had a promotion called Renaissance Pro Wrestling. I think it was Renaissance, might have been Resistance. It was one of those words. Look it up. That promotion was held out in Chicago, and I think AMC was the people that were making the show. They were actually filming a reality show at the time called Untitled Billy Corgan's Pro Wrestling Project. So while, yeah, he is just a rock star that has some money, he has dipped his toes in the world of wrestling, so you gotta give the guy some credit. So if you've seen this guy's face before, but you really don't know where he is, and you just didn't hear me like 30 seconds ago, I said he was the president of TNA. So essentially, Billy Corgan put up forth a lot of money, like I believe it was a million dollars, into TNA, and eventually he actually had so much power because he gave them so much freaking money, he pretty much made the president of Impact Wrestling, TNA, GFW, whatever it's called. But as he started to gain a lot more power, people started to realize, oh my God, he's actually gaining a lot of power, and they cut him down real quick. TNA executives and all these kind of people, they basically just ran him out of the company, and there was a big lawsuit. Now, as I said, it started the video, Billy Corgan bought the trademark, the world title, and the brand of the NWA. Now, he bought on May 1st, 2017, but really didn't do anything with it until October 7th. Now, this is mainly what the whole video is about. Is the NWA slowly on a rise again? To answer that is yes, and no, it all depends on what you mean by on a rise once again. This is pretty much how Upstart Wrestling Promotion starts. I won't use the name, but actually I went to a promotion like last year, they had their first ever show. And as a recording this, they're no longer around and haven't been around in a couple of months. But the minute you start this promotion, you're so fixated on making sure you have this roster, look at big venue, something that really came a hold of the crowd that you're probably gonna get. And because you have the right people in charge, you're working on that TV deal that you'll probably never get. And if you do, it'll be on a station that no one's ever gonna watch. Now you pretty much lose sight in the Wrestling, and that's how you see a lot of promotions start up and defunct real quick. Global Force Wrestling. Almost a year of the NWA really being like a product that you can now watch. The idea that Billy Corgan or maybe like Billy Corgan and his team of people have for the NWA is pretty unique. Now another thing that I missed out when I'm talking about wrestling promotions that start up and have like all these big plans. I know every single one of you guys watching this has heard this at some point. We're gonna bring old school wrestling back. We're gonna make wrestling what it should be or wrestling what it used to be. And to all the people that want to see wrestling how it used to be, promoters starting these independents that want wrestling how it used to be. And I think the NWA finally has a representative 
that actually realizes that it is 2018, not 1948. Now, the last couple presidents of the NWA, they didn't really do that great of a job, if we're gonna be honest. Because in all seriousness, if they really did that good of a job, the NWA would be talked about right now. Allowing all these independents to become NWA-sponsored promotions, I guess. Where they have like a Florida World Heavyweight Champion of Michael Tarver from the Nexus. I have nothing against him, but is that someone you really wanna represent as a world champion? in the NWA. I'm not trying to be mean, but no. Something that Billy Corgan's doing, which is something that you don't see any other wrestling promotion doing now because, well, either they have their own style or they just can't figure that out yet. He's taking old school values of the NWA World's Heavyweight Champion and the new values of 2018, not 1948. At first, the NWA Champion was Tim Storm. Now, he eventually dropped the title to Nick Aldis, aka Magnus, at a CZW show back in December. Now, Nick Aldis, in my opinion, is actually the best person to pick for someone that could represent the NWA, but also have this feeling of a newer wrestler. One has a lot of credibility to his name he's a former TNA world champion defeated the likes of Samoa Joe and AJ Styles and Kurt Angle and all these people that we all know and he also gives off that old school feel of the NWA world champion now it's been X amount of months and you haven't heard Billy Corgan really talk about ooh TV deals ooh big roster ooh big events he hasn't done any of that yet because now the Billy Corgan version of the NWA is not in it for the short term of having all these big hopes and big promises packing all these giant arenas because it's the NWA is back again. No, he realizes this because he's a wrestling fan that the NWA is dead and he has to rebuild this house brick by brick by brick by brick to make it somewhat important again. Nick Aldis has gone all around the world, literally around the actual world. Been defending the NWA World's Heavyweight Championship on the Aldis Crusade. For one, winning in CCW, which is already a big American promotion. Defending a championship wrestling from Hollywood. Yeah, it was against a guy like James Ellsworth, but James Ellsworth does have a big name value to him. That was mainly just for people to realize that this title still exists again. To really giving it that world's feeling of defending the title in China against Cole Cabana. To Matt Cross in Next Gen in Tennessee. To Brandon Scott in MCW in Maryland. To David Starr in the UK at IPW. And other future promotions that will be on defending the title. What has all this in the NWA really accomplished going to all these different promotions? Two things. Anyone that forgot about the NWA gets to see the World Championship again, and when he goes to defend this title, it's only against top guys in that promotion. Therefore, all the people in attendance that really care about that guy who's wrestling, they see the NWA World title and they're like, oh my god, I forgot that was a thing. It's back? Well, let me watch. Essentially picking up fans all over the world that maybe don't go on YouTube every day or Twitter and see this kind of stuff happen. Now, while the letters still say NWA, it's no longer the same promotion it once was. That's why you see a guy like Tommy Dreamer who also had an NWA World title match on his promotion, House of Hardcore. You don't see Tommy Dreamer promote House of Hardcore like the next coming of ECW. No, because the wrestling world and the actual world have changed so much that they don't want to see all this kind of stuff anymore. Yeah, having Extreme Rules matches and all these other kind of death matches in like the CCW and House of Hardcore. Yeah, those are cool, but it's just not what the wrestling world is anymore. Even with all these promotions trying to get on television. Why? Why do you want to get on television? Make a YouTube account. It's free. I actually did some research on this. So in the first quarter of 2017, almost 400,000 people in the United States unsubscribed or basically just got rid of cable television. Because again, it is 2018. I don't have to use a dial-up to call someone. I can ask Siri. And with platforms like YouTube and Netflix and Hulu and WWE Network, the NFL Network, New Japan World, Facebook, Twitter, even Instagram, people don't really watch television anymore. Anything I can see on TV, I can probably find that or something better on YouTube. That's why you see companies like Impact Wrestling, like House of Hardcore, like Wrestle Circus. While Impact Wrestling saw on Pop TV, they also show their stuff on Twitch. It's no longer about trying to get on television or compete with the WWE because both of those are essentially impossible. You can get on television, but good chance no one's gonna watch it. And you can try to compete with WWE, <laughs> I mean, you're not gonna win. A lot of promotions are vibing for that second spot or that CFL point. And for all we know, maybe a year or two down the road, NWA may just be another one of those, I wanna be the NFL, but I'm CFL kind of people. The fact of the matter is, if you go on the NWA YouTube channel and you watch one of the matches, there's a good chance that the views on one of those matches is probably a good percentage of what Pop TV gets with Impact Wrestling, if we're gonna be serious about it. And with the talent pool that you see today of people not having to sign contracts to go on this television show or that television show, that's why people like the Young Bucks are so successful they don't need to go to WWE and be only held down by one promotion they can work Ring of Honor and work New Japan or someone like Shane Strickland can work all over the world be the Defy champion be MLW champion be this champion be that champion be all the champions what Billy Corgan and NWA is really trying to do right now is not make a brand new wrestling promotion but to make this NWA World Heavyweight Championship the world championship of professional wrestling. Will the NWA ever feel like the NWA again? The NWA will never be like how it was again because there is a WWE, there is New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact, Ring of Honor. Promotions are just too big, especially the WWE, to have someone that reigns over all of them. But will the NWA World's Heavyweight Championship ever feel like the world title of professional wrestling again? At the rate that Billy Corgan and Nick Aldis are going, there actually is a chance. And if you are following all the stuff with the NWA right now, tell me what you think. Is there actually a possibility that this brand can become the brand it once was again? Or is it now going in a new direction? But thank you guys for watching the video. Really enjoyed make sure to like comment share always subscribe and we out
police coming straight from the underground. A young got it back, cause I'm brown. And not the other color, so police.